Hi, everyone. My name is Georgia Reich, and I am the founder of Lead Vision and the sponsor of a new initiative I am launching called Fempreneur Purpose Driven Women. And of course, you've seen a couple of other uh, postings of mine online, as well as a former um, podcast that I did featuring another colleague. And today I'm featuring a, another amazing woman who I had the opportunity to meet. Oh, was it 20 years ago, Betsy? I think we're we're getting closer to 25, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. boy. It's been a while. It has been a while, and we both still look amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you totally look amazing. <laughs> well, I'm so excited to have Betsy Hicks-Russ here today. And Betsy is, it's a hard to... It's hard to put Betsy into one small sentence. <laughs> and that's what I love about her. And, yeah. that, and that's what I love about the women that I know because we are multidimensional beings, of course. And Betsy is somebody like me living out her sense of purpose in a variety of ways. So I thought I would just jump in, Betsy, and kind of go over some of our questions. I mean, I just want to reiterate that one of the reasons I'm talking about this from a purpose-driven lens is that you know anybody can start a business, but when you move from a sense of who you are called to be, and when life takes you to move from who you are called to be, you know, that's a sense of purpose. And you're also doing things for a greater sense of achievement an impact in the world. So um, that really is what I'm hoping to convey is that there are a lot of people out there doing great work from a sense of purpose. And Betsy is one of those folks. So Betsy, I would like to first ask you, I know you have a couple of different organizations and I first would like you to talk about your, you have a business and you have a nonprofit, correct? Yeah. Yes. And if you wouldn't mind starting with your business first and when that got started and what really inspired you to get that going? You know, it's interesting inspiration for anything that I've ever done have been my circumstances, not my drive. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I have drive and I have purpose, but I've also been thrown into so many different circumstances that I, I kind of had to go into a sink or swim. And then when I learned how to swim, it was my desire to teach others. Mm -hmm. So everything that I've ever done has been that. I mean, I, I often think like, wouldn't it be nice to like to, to work as a cashier or, you know, some, some, some place where I don't have to have, like, I could say hello and be kind and loving to people every day, but I don't have to have a drive but it's like darn it you're, the universe just keeps giving me these darn drives so oh, my goal is a tiki bar in florida <laughs> and it's never going to happen because i have all this drive you don't know <laughs> um so I, I guess i should start with my circumstances to help understand my drive so my circumstances were um uh had my, I have three children, my son of twins, who's now almost 31, but he's 30, um, is profoundly autistic, early age, diagnosed quickly. His twin sister, also autistic, but very high functioning. Uh, I don't even like the word high functioning, but, but she got her master's. Uh, Joey's non-speaking. So it's more apraxia based than anything. And a lot of severe mental illnesses. So I was, um, I married John Hicks, MD, who was, you know, and loved. Um, and we had a holistic medical practice. He's a medical doctor, but we, he turned natural medicine. And for 16 years, I ran his natural medicine um, uh, office and mostly in supplements. I worked in the supplement end of things and, and working towards managing the, the whole office. Um, sadly he passed away, uh, this April, I guess it will be eight years, eight years. Um, and it, without any notice, I mean, that sounds strange. Like, yeah, I just, I didn't even know he was sick and, and quickly died. 
Um, and so I didn't have anything prepared. We had just filed bankruptcy a year before. Mm -hmm. And um, then I, so I was just, I, I had no money. I had no job. I really didn't, couldn't even take my skills and do anything with them per se, because I needed his license in order to con continue doing what I was doing. Okay. I could have probably worked for another doctor, but I, I think everything was too raw at that point for me to do that. Mm. So it was, it was really a now what situation. And I had to do something because I had no money. Um, and I had to leave my, we were renting a place. I had to leave that to get something more affordable. And then just like that, of course, there's a whole story drama involved, but Ron comes into my life. Who's my current, his last name is Russ. That's why that's where the Russ comes from. And, and Ron comes into my life five months after John passes and we start this beautiful new life together. And, um, you know, certainly there was a security piece of it, but I had, it what it really wasn't that we kind of built together. Um, I helped him create a business because that's what I was good at was helping people start businesses and such. So I helped him create a business, which I lightly manage now. But then after things kind of settled, I went back to my favorite roots. Now, years and years ago, decades ago, I wrote, started writing about picky eating and picky eating is a passion of mine because in John's holistic medical practice, no matter how many supplements he, he would give his patients, no matter how rigid, rigid the therapy protocol was, if, if the insides were not connecting and working properly, kids couldn't, the kids were only reaching a certain level. And so food became a big piece. Well, it kind of frustrates me in the sense where people say, well, Picky eating is a uh, symptom of autism. It's like, mm. so what? what is the symptom there is sensory integration. Individuals who are autistic have a hard time with sensory processing. And that is the main goal be before what goes in our mouth. Like it's how are we going to sensory be able to, to pull it apart? So understanding picky eating comes from so many different directions and it has been my my quest of which i try to pass on to others because it comes from to in order to get rid of picky eating yes there's a behavioral piece of it but that's what all the feeding clicks feeding clinics and everybody's doing is they're just working on the behavioral end of it there is a biomedical component because what we what we are craving is based strongly on what our gut flora is doing. So if we have an abundance of yeast and bad pathogens, we're going to crave the sugars. If we have a beautiful, gentle, ecocentric type, like this is kind of beautiful. It's working all within its own uh, is, uh, flora, then we are going to crave healthy foods. So Understanding that. And then of course, and back, you can call it behavioral, but a lot of the feeding clinics are also working strongly on the sensory piece of it, which is important. Very, very important. But you have to blend it all together. You have to blend together the sensory, the biomedical and the behavioral. And that's where I have found I can be of tremendous help. Um, so I created an online course uh, and I, you know, put it up on a website and people paid a fee to join and, and watch them. And I was getting really, really frustrating, frustrated with the excuses of, I, I you know, I, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to spend the money or I, I just, I, all these excuses. So I finally got to a point where it's like, I'm going to do what some marketing women have told me in the past is you give away 80%. And then you collect on that special niche of the 20%. So I ended up giving the class away, changed it all on my website so that it is a free class to watch. And now I work as a private consultant with the individuals who need to fine tune it. So you can go on YouTube. It's not very, I just uploaded it on YouTube, but it's on pickyeatingsolutions.com. You can listen to 70, seven zero classes for free. There's, oh, there's so much information. Oh, and, then, and then if you need some help in fine tuning it, 
And that's what I found. Like I have a video for just about every topic, but there's still the uniqueness. And so that's, so I work with people on that part of it um, as a consultant. Oh, wow. Okay. So just to clarify, your focus really is children with autism. Not really. Uh, I mean, I, I, okay. The, again, my platform is children with autism, but I've worked with right everyone, including adults. I work with a lot of adults, including to the man that I'm now with. <laughs> I, I, I might with be calling you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and the when I say the platform is because so here's my platform. So first I was known as as the widow of Dr. John Hicks. Right. And I had a lot of following from that. What is she up to? I started writing a blog for a while just to stay sane and mm-hmm. connect with and that was that was fun um but then um one strange day about five years ago um I was I was bored as I could be maybe it was four four years ago TikTok was just starting to boom and a friend of mine had told me about it and I was really really bored and I was sitting with Joey and he was on a beach just playing joyfully and I thought you know I have nothing else to do maybe I'll try making a TikTok video (laughs) And I did, and I got, you know, a few people interested. And then I started doing more and more and more people got interested. And it's so funny because I so did not set out to do this, but now I have 118,000 followers. Fancy. And um, it, it turned out that what I love doing is editing. So I just really enjoy the process. And then I was able to take my message to from the heart to give to all of these really struggling mamas who are just getting this diagnosis. And I just want to hug them all. Mm -hmm. So what I'm kind of like doing now is doing inspirational. I do some kind of humorous stuff. I do life with Joey. um, And then occasionally I'll do something with food, but the food part is really fascinating because going circling back to the picky eating solutions the food part is fascinating because a lot of people will complain and talk about that they can't get their kids but they really and I think I think in in their heart of hearts they want to make it better but they are literally at the peak of their ability to do something different and they just don't want to upset the apple cart and they just can't go there and 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 yeah. it's, it's probably easier to give a can of SpaghettiOs. Yeah. Well, than yeah. To, you know, then to put that time and energy and it's just hard to create that when you're really stressed to begin with. Correct. Right. And that, and the fact that America, right. United States makes it very hard to properly shop and properly source real food. Right. So it's, it's a compounding issue and, and, and it's, it's doable and I work with loads of people, but it really has to come from a place of belief. You can't dabble in something like this and not have it change you. Like the more you learn about how scary and poisonous so many of our foods are, the more it becomes very easy to make better choices because you, you, but on the other hand, I don't like, I don't sell fear. I'm I'm never going to do a video going out there and saying the fact that you're eating canola oil is the proof that you're going to die. Or like, that is not, I mean, I might, I might think that some days, but but I, I, I'm not here to scare. Uh, I'm here to take you to the next step. Like I'm here to, where are you now? You don't have to go to where I am but let's get you to the next step. Let's just, let's just go up one step. Let's just move the needle just a little teeny bit. Mm -hmm. And, and that's where it kind of needs to be as opposed to just believing. I, 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 I've talked to people who have been through expensive feeding clinics, expensive, expensive. And all they ever do is sensory and behavioral. And they do nothing to understand that as long as you're getting those uh, MSG, those flavor enhanced, those 
this completely processed to the pulverization of that it's not even food anymore. As long as you're still getting that, your body is going to keep craving that. So it's like trying to tell an alcoholic, you really need to, you know, take a sip of water, but then allowing them to just juggle the alcohol. It's it's an addiction. And so you have to you have to take it as a whole and you have to pull the, the bad out in order to, for the good to be present. And there's so many ways to do that. And anybody who's out there who says, oh, not my child, I can promise you we are not going to. It's possible. I've worked with thousands of individuals and it is 100 percent possible. That is really good to know. Well, here's my question. Can I ask you a specific question yeah. about food and the impact on uh, autism? Right. Huge. I mean, Huge. what have you experienced? It's not a cure. And, and I think, I think uh, one of my favorite example uh, examples is, is the tax story. Okay. If you have five tax in the bottom of your heel and you take out two of them, you're still in tremendous pain. You still have a lot of issues, but what happens is people take out the tax of food and say, Oh, they're not a hundred percent better. It didn't work. Oh, I see. I see. So nothing in autism, no therapy, no, no intervention, no drug, no food, nothing is going to be, is going to take all the tax off by itself. You have to find what all those tax are. And when you do that, that's when change really starts to happen. That's when you, you start looking for, okay, let's get rid of this tax, tax let's get rid of this tax. And, and that's when things happen. So yes, have I seen kids get completely, the diagnosis gone just through diet alone? A hundred percent, many, many, many times. Ooh. But typically it is a combination of many things because we're looking here at sensory and we're looking at um, uh, processing and what we eat, we can't deny if our serotonin is made in our gut, which it is, I, I wasn't, that was a rhetorical question. Our serotonin is mostly manufactured in our gut. And if our, if our, when our serotonin is made in our gut and our gut is a complete mess, how are we supposed to make the mood regulators? How are we supposed to assimilate the vitamins that need to happen for methylation? How are we supposed to control our nervous system if all we're putting in there is junk? And I think what people think is, well, the FDA wouldn't pass it if in fact it, it, it was bad for us. And at, at what point do you believe the government is out for your best interest? <laughs> like, like who even out there believes that the government is out there for your best interest anymore? So if, if, if anything, you know, it's super interesting because I posted a video about picky eating on my TikTok page just recently. And um, some, I, I had all these people from different countries so confused. What do you mean by picky eating? What do you mean by this? Like, like they just couldn't understand it because this is a bigger problem in extremely wealthy countries where options are an, a, a possibility. Because what I used to say all the time when I was teaching picky eating 20 years ago was, you know, if chicken nuggets didn't exist a hundred years ago, did, did children starve? If if, 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 you know, they did it. Okay. <laughs> oh, You're like, like no, they didn't. Alert, they didn't. <laughs> they didn't. So, right. so we have to, we have to think in terms of, you know, where is our role? How do we, how do we help move there? So, but it, it strongly has to do with the flavor enhancers, the way that they're manufacturing food. And it's making it so hard for a, a, a mom or dad to go out into society and be able to make good choices on the go with the kind of lifestyle that we've been demanding to be lived by. Mm -hmm. And especially the school lunches, which are a catastrophe and all of that. They're making it hard on us. And those of us that are, you know, that are out there um, uh, trying to make a difference and try to change, you know, we get made fun of because nobody wants to believe that it means anything, but it's changing. It's really, really changing now. And people are starting to see, oh, wait a second. If the government doesn't tell me the truth about this, then what else could they maybe not be telling me the truth about? 
we all have to take ownership and can't be yeah. shut anymore. Yes. You know, You're exactly I mean, right. it, it, yeah. you know, I know you and I connect on that spiritual level with owning your life, owning your power, being a yeah. creator of it. And yes. it really is about, you know, looking at the truths that you need to find and not absorbing what you're being fed, quote, yes. fed in many different ways. Now, listen, Literally. you are a total, you're just total passion, Betsy. You haven't changed in 20 years. That's awesome. But I got to ask a few more questions. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Move on. <laughs> you know, First of all, I remember when we met, we were talking about housing all those years ago with you and John and your, your visions for what families need. And I felt at that point, um, I always knew you, I don't, I don't want this to sound bad, but I always knew you were your own powerhouse. I knew John was a powerhouse and I knew you guys as a couple were a powerhouse but I always felt your own powerhouse. Thank you. And I, I see that emerging in you now, you know, it's always been there, but there's something that kind of is organic around, maybe around your purpose. So let me ask you, do you, do you feel like you know what your purpose is? Do you have a sense of, if you could put words around that, what does that feel like? I think for me that focusing on my purpose is not something I want to fine tune. It's something I want to generalize hmm. because I'm not, I, I'm showing up for whatever is needed for me. I, I don't, I don't want to have six month, two year, five year, 10 year goals. That that's, that is, that doesn't bring me joy. Uh, figure you know reaching these goals reaching these numbers isn't what brings me joy um I, I like to go general what what is it you want from me what what's the next logical step right what where what cooperative components are coming in my life that is going to take me to where I need to go next mm. and being humble knowing that um I, I don't have the drive to be the it person. I don't have the drive to be the CEO or anything in that range. I, 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 I can work well with the team. I just, I just want to see change happen. And I, and I want to work in that direction. So my passion really comes on a day to day. It wow. comes, it comes from what, what's the next logical step, what feels right today. And I have so many different pots on the stove right now that, um, I often have to let something simmer for a while and right. then go deal with the, with what, what needs to be taken care of right now. Well, that is that beautiful approach of that cooperative components you talked about. You know, when you were speaking, I just had this feeling that whatever purpose might be, it doesn't even need words because being you is the purpose meaning yes. being showing up every day as you and allowing yourself to move both from inspiration yeah. and those other pieces that come into play at that right timing. Um, and that's a really interesting thought. You know, I think a lot of people are very hung up. Oh, I have to have this one purpose in life and this is where I'm going. I mean, I only have a sense of purpose because God told me and it was a big vision thing. And I'm like, okay. So, right. but the real truth is, is what you just said, that without me showing up and participating, none of those exterior dynamics yeah. really function without you being present to who you are and being your natural self. That's awesome. I wanted to also ask you, um, you know, do you, what is it as a woman? that's been particularly challenging. I, I know it's been quite a journey since you kind of launched into this own essence of becoming this new space for yourself. What are the biggest challenges that you know, you've been facing in all honesty? 
I, I don't find being a woman has been a challenge for me. I've never really experienced, and, and I'm not saying that doesn't exist all the time. I know it does. I'm just saying in, in my particular circumstances, I've always been with partners who were really enhanced by a powerful woman. Mm -hmm. So they appreciate my drive and power and allow me to be who I need to be and show up for them in the way that I could show up for them. So I've, I've had incredible, um, my John and now Ron, um, have just been incredibly driven, help, help, help drive me even more. And I help support their businesses. I don't mind being in the background. Like with John, I, I ran his place, but John's face was what went up on everything. And, but everybody who knew the business knew, <laughs> knew, knew what was really going to kind of go. You, you always knew who to call and it, <laughs> it was you. <laughs> it's like, I, I, my ego just didn't need that. I, I it's well, still, well, hold on a minute. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. We have to go to our other. Okay. I'm going to let my dog out while you're doing. Okay. I'll, all right. I'll come back. All right. All right, we oh actually we have about uh nine more minutes, but you go do oh, what you do. Oh no, sorry, I'm sorry. Now you have to edit it. I'm sorry. I, oh, I'm good at editing. I love the editing. Okay. Sorry, I had to let my dog out. Um okay, so back to this. Um oh I forgot where we're at. That's okay. I might not even edit because I'm okay with organic and real. <laughs> <laughs> That's me, organic and real. <laughs> That's it. It's good. Okay. So no, so so with with supporting supporting these other individuals in my life, that I, I just feel like I don't need that ego boost. I don't need and the and the social media has been weird for me because it started off interestingly enough where I was hiding behind Joey. Like it was like the next person I was gonna hide behind. Like, like I was first hiding behind John, then I was hiding behind Joey. And it was Ron who's like, um, how about you? Like people wanna hear from you. And so I had done all my videos up on TikTok and, and now it's getting, starting to get, I, I, I was late to the game with Instagram, but I'm starting to get bigger with Instagram now. And uh, it's Betsy on the go, by the way. Um, right. So I was late, late to the game, but with, with Instagram and I, I, when I was creating these videos based on Joey, I started getting a lot of questions from other mamas and dads as well. And they just wanted to understand how I can smile as much as I do and be so optimistic and do all the challenging things I do and still, and, and you know, still be okay. Cause I've been doing this for 30 years. So that's when I started talking to them and it was funny because, you know, everywhere we went, people would recognize Joey before. And now people are starting to know who I am, which is fine. They can, or they, they don't have to. <laughs> need them I would I would say so yes it's fine but I think um I don't know I think there's a lot of beauty and power in not hiding behind someone yeah yeah and Absolutely. that is also the amazing thing about getting older as a woman I mean it's just you know, after mating and reproducing and, you know, creating the home, you know, this, this beautiful thing about aging is that gift of moving into yourself in a different way. And especially if you kind of fulfilled a lot of other people's dreams and, you know, taking care of children and done the best you can. I don't know. I think it's really beautiful that you are at that place in your life. And, and that role model is what, mom's need don't you think I do I do I, I I I'm very very honest about who I am what my capacity for what my strength capacity is and when I when I feel just vulnerable and tired and like I don't want to do it anymore because I gotta say 
I mean, I cannot speak for a, a, um, a parent of another child with special needs of any sort, uh, other than a lot of what the autism world has shown me, because I worked with, with so many thousands of kids, autistic kids over the years. Uh, but it, it is, it is a extremely demanding, very, very stressful existence for a lot of these mamas and, um, and dads, and it's tearing a lot of people apart. And so what we need is just gentleness and compassion. We don't need me to be going there and saying it's, you know, your fault for forgiving them gluten and dairy. Although I am a fan of a gluten and dairy diet. <laughs> tell somebody That's, that's like causing that because that's not what they need to hear. No, they, yeah. they, they need to hear that they're, that they're doing just great where they are today. And quite honestly, they are because they got out of bed. And so let's, exactly. let's, let's get forward. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I personally can't even imagine that experience. So the hope factor that you can give to another human being um, is a powerful factor in healing and sustaining life. Truly. I mean, without that, I know a lot of people may even feel like they're giving up and families are broken. Yeah. So that yeah. hope that you're providing is really a huge gift. Yeah. It's, it's, it feels good. It, it feels like the right place for me right now. Um, quickly. I mean, I know I want to talk about the nonprofit as well, but I know that you have a special project with your vests, right? Yeah. Joe's vests. So that is another uh, circumstances brought me to pa passion. <laughs> um, we were living, when I first met Ron, um, I, we moved in together shortly after we started dating. <laughs> because I mean, You're both so smart, girl. <laughs> <laughs> My so, fingers are crossed. <laughs> so we, I, we were living in San Francisco together and uh, Joey, um, I, Joey, loves to bike ride. And so we started riding a, a lot, taking our bikes and it became a, a, a thing that we would do. But at the very beginning, it was terrifying because so Joey's non-speaking and he is, can be extremely impulsive and, and he doesn't understand courtesy. So what was happening was we would be riding along and, you know, he'd cut somebody off and people would scream at him. And then I would yell, he's autistic. And they'd be like, oh, sorry. And it was just like, it was so stressful going for bike rides. It was driving me nuts. So I got this idea. I had this orange safety vest that I had put on him just so people could see him. And I just went and bought some iron on letters and I put on there autistic. Aww. And it was, I, I still tear up thinking about that first time, the very first time we rode with that vest, where it, it was on both sides, where everybody was like, thumbs up and please go in front of us and don't worry about it. Or, you know, great job, buddy. Uh -huh. And um, so it started just through cycling. But then we thought, well, can we use it like other places? So we would go for walks. And again, like he would have these impulsive behaviors, but with the vest on, everybody was kind and less calm. He would be on the bus and where, where people would get off the bus or go sit on the other side of the bus. Now they were sitting next to him and telling him he's doing great or tell the caregiver you're doing a great job. Everything was changing because of that. And it was, and people will say, oh, you shouldn't label. And it's like, well, you know, you're, if you have a handicapped parking space, you're labeling. If you, you know, if, if somebody is deaf and they are sh sh somehow explained to you that they're, that they're, that's labeling. You have, all we're trying to do is get a fast message because it, it could be a split second as somebody's riding on a bike, a fast message that this person needs special consideration. And that's what my mission mission is. They just need some special consideration. Amazing. And, and, and it's also a matter of safety because of course, right. I'm, because people are getting attacked with them, not knowing that they're autistic. So there's a huge matter of safety involved as well. So I started a nonprofit with it and that's where my passion is with my vest. Oh, that's wonderful. So who is that? <laughs> This is Casey Jones. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> she thinks she's a person. So just well, she <laughs> obviously knows her name because when you said her name, she went, "Hi, mom." <laughs> Hi, mom. Yeah, she's she's a little attached to the hit the hip. I, I you know with autism you don't get a lot of affection, so I I was de desperately in need of oh. someone who actually appreciates. <laughs> <laughs> well, kids in general, once they get older, they don't want to hug as much as they used to anyway. So good for Casey. She's your yeah. she's your support dog there. She's well, I wanted to continue a little bit more about the vests because my understanding is that has really taken off. And if you would share a little bit about that and and what your idea is around the nonprofit and and the name of the nonprofit. Uh, Autism Odyssey is our, I chose the word Odyssey because um, it's like an epic adventure. It's, um, mm. I, I, and that's how I looked at life is wow. that it's just this epic adventure. And so I, I have had, it's autismodyssey.org. Um, and what, what we're really moving in the way of is it's cultivating compassion. It's it's supporting freedom because what frustrates me in autism are individuals who never get to go anywhere, never get to go places. And part of it is because their caregivers are just so overwhelmed and it's so exhausting because this is what you're doing when your child is 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 very challenging is your i'm sorry he's autistic i'm sorry he's autistic he didn't mean to bother you he's autistic he doesn't understand he's autistic and that's that is very very exhausting to have to do so the, the the vest by giving a quick information just has everybody around the situation calm down you know joey will be someplace and have a meltdown and will scream at the top of his lungs when people see autistic, they know that I'm not hurting him. He's not dangerous. It's just where we're at right now. So that's kind of where we're wanting to go with it more. I'd like to have them eventually in different languages. I'd like to be able to have different, you know, I have right currently, I have four different sizes. I'd like to be able to expand on that, have different colors. There's a lot of things I need to do. Um, so I need, I need to find partners in life. I, I, you yeah. Don't want to <laughs> yeah. Partnership is the way to go. I know. It's like, I always tell people, you can have the credit. I don't really care. I just, I just want to see I it. I just happen. need your help. <laughs> that's exactly. right. Well, that is an interesting, um, excuse me. I don't know. Um, that's an interesting thought because I'm seeing both in business and the nonprofit sector as a consultant, that that power from partnerships is growing only because first of all, you can leverage more with collaboration and the financial resources aren't as abundant, especially in the nonprofit sector. Um, so partnering really goes, uh, you know, helps initiatives go a long way for more than one, one group of people. So, um, well, because you, not everybody can be everything. I mean, I, I'm a great thinker. I'm a great, um, I'm a great getter dunner. <laughs> Uh, and I'm really good with the networking and the and the people end of things, but I, I don't have the organization or patience for a lot of the business development de development side of things. I know how to do a lot of stuff, business, but I need somebody who's a little bit more structured that way. I mean, I've obviously been able to create businesses over years and do the basics, but if you want to go to high levels, you you need to have a little bit more experience in there. Sure. Well, oh, right. and that, that is also one of those awesome things about, at least for me, getting older um, is I have no problem knowing what I do well and knowing what I don't do well yeah. and, and then getting that help um, that to compliment myself, you know, or teach me something. I have, still, you know, so yeah, true. exactly. Lots to learn. And I'm always learning from you every time I talk to you. That is absolutely for sure. What's on the horizon for you, my friend? What what's coming up that you want well, to share? Yeah, so we um we're very close to getting Joey in his own apartment. Um we've got some more steps that have to fall into place first, but we're probably only months away from that. Um and now that I'm going to have more free time, um what I would like to do and this has been a passion for a long time and I'm going to throw it in with my whole autism odyssey missions is that mm -hmm. 
I want there to be not, there's, there's, there's great group housing. Um, they're called different things in different States, residential right. care, right. You know, all these different yeah. things. But what I want is there to be more respite mm -hmm. um, and a place where uh, like, you know, when you're sick, like, or you're having a surgery or you need to go to an important business meeting that there are agencies that can actually take over for your, to take your child because it's such an intensive, nobody else is going to help you kind of feel. I mean, there are some families that are super blessed with extended family that will take on that, but most do not, including my own. I have not a single family member who would take Joey if we were in need of it um, for the most part, because he scares them. Yeah. So, so um, I have uh, Ron's son who is phenomenal and is currently Joey's main caregiver. And he's been phenomenal just as a, as, as a big brother kind of an image. Um, and that helps me a lot, but a lot of people just don't have any respite whatsoever. So that, that is what we need to see happen is to have, I would love to see what happens. And I've been working with some housing authority individuals on this and we're, we're getting closer is what we want to see happen is a community living situation where some individuals can live there, but that they have several beds that can be used for respite. So that if a parent needs a break, a right. vacation, a day off, uh, they're sick, whatever it might be, there's a place for their child to go. So it's a housing community for yes. um, the individual, the child, yeah. and for the family, but that is really mostly to allow as a support tool for they that they don't live there full time or do you is that your vision? I think there's gonna be both. There'll be a mix. Ah, okay. There'll, Sorry. there'll be those that live there full time, but then there'll be a certain housing area for those that are transient and come in for a day or so or maybe even a week while their parents take a vacation, mm -hmm. whatever it might be. And this 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 is on the horizon. I mean there are models like this being created and, and I have been seeing more and more of this need pop up. But it it's 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 going to be vital or we're gonna start if if it's not vital, we're gonna start seeing um just people because they're they're getting adrenal fatigue right. that they can't do this anymore. And exactly. then what's then what's gonna happen? I don't even want to yeah. talk about what's gonna happen. Yeah. It's, not yeah. a good, it's not a good subject. So um, but it this is this is where I want to go. This is definitely where I want to put my next focus on. And if anybody out there listening who wants to pair me with some individuals, let me know because it's I'm all about the networking. Oh, that's wonderful. That's great. Well, you know I'm all for the housing. So I know you I'm are excited. Well, I'm excited because what what's so cool is whenever we met 20 plus years ago, I oh it was 25. Now that you say that. <laughs> <laughs> there's there are I have gaps that are just missing out of my memory. <laughs> But, you know, it's so awesome. And that is the thing with inspired people is that, you know, those visions, some of them really never go away. But it's sort of what you mentioned before about that kind of cooperative components. And I also use the word divine timing. Yeah. Like that, that vision has never changed. And yeah everything that you have been experiencing has brought you to this moment oh, 100%. and and in the grand scheme and even though it makes me want to tear up but even even john going yeah oh no 100%. it's yeah. like oh wow because that it moves you to keep moving into what who you're supposed to express oh. it's amazing in john a way. was the perfect then ron is the perfect right now right right and and that's and that's it. But yes, this, the inspired action that comes from your life circumstances is, is the greatest thing that you could pay attention to because that's what your purpose is. I'm going to write that one down. And that's, that is an amazing quote. It's so true. It's so true. It is. And, and you have done a great job following your passion as well too. And it's, well, it, it depends on who you ask, but <laughs> well, 
<laughs> I no longer care about those comments. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I think I think it also is we have to stop looking at making multi-dollar dollar businesses as being our path to success. I think that there are plenty of people who are extremely successful that have been in the background and have not made a lot of money doing it. Um, but but it's you know the the joys in the journey as they say and it and it right. and it is we're, we're well, all and together. the abundance comes in many different forms and just thinking about you know the gifts that you're bringing people the abundance of hope yeah you know yeah. that doesn't have a dollar sign right away you know right. what I mean like that that is a flow of wealth that is moving in and out of our world. And people like you and people like me are moving that energy and sharing that energy. And, and that to me is how I want to be spending the rest of my life. What about you? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I wouldn't change. I, well, I, for today, I would exactly today. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> no promises over to my, my no. desires tomorrow. No. <laughs> No, my in my family, the kids always get really nervous when I start a sentence. I have an idea. <laughs> Is that different than yesterday's idea, mom? You know, you write whatever the day brings that you move your energy into and the flow of that. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to share or promote no. or this is I'll just be sure to put your links up? Yeah, please do. Please follow me. And, 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 you know, if, if you are following me on social media, let me know what you want to see more of. Okay. Um, it's, it's interesting because a lot of people say they want to see more of the food and the food are, are always my lowest views when it comes to, but, but I think it's where I get the biggest, I get the biggest bang for my buck. So um, I, I want, I want to know what people's food questions are. I want to know how I can make things easier for you. Wonderful, Betsy. Well, thank you so much for being a part of the podcast today. I'm yeah. so grateful, first of all, to know you. And I know we haven't kept in touch a lot, but I hope we continue to over the next few years. I may, in fact, be coming up to Seattle. So uh, I'll be oh. out in that way. And if, if I am, I'll be sure to stop by and, and just Absolutely. be present to you all and what you're doing. So thank you again. Thanks, Georgia. Thanks for having me. All right.